1. Welcome back to our study in the book of Colossians. We're in the first chapter and we're just kind of going through the introductory verses and we looked at a couple of verses last session that I want to read back to you as we kind of connect the dots together. We'll start in verse 5. Because of the hope reserved for you in heaven, of which you previously heard in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you just as in all the world also, it is bearing fruit and increasing even as it has been doing in you also since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. Again, he's telling them the process of the gospel and how when you understand where your faith is and who you are in Christ, then you're going to grow with that too. And that's the evidence, shall we say, of the true believer is that they grow in their faith. And it's very important that we understand that and that we practice that. Now that doesn't always mean we're going to be perfect or that we're going to be uh, blossoming and growing forth every day all the way in the same way. But it does mean that over a period of time, there is evidence that we are making progress in who we are as Christians in our faith in Jesus Christ. And he goes on to say in verse 7, Just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow bondservant, who is a faithful servant of Christ on our behalf, and he also informed us of your love in the Holy Spirit. Apparently Epaphras was one of the first people that was led to faith in Christ at Colossae. And he kind of brought the church together and started evangelizing. And we see him listed in two other places later on in Colossians in chapter 4 verse 12. And also in Philemon, Paul makes reference to him. There are some theologians who think that the Philemon reference may be a different Epaphras because that was obviously a uh, common name in the Roman Empire at that time. We don't know, but we'll assume that it's the same person. He was a faithful servant of Christ, and he did it on behalf of Paul and the apostles who traveled with him and his companions. And he also was obviously keeping them informed about what was going on and how the church was growing in their love in the Holy Spirit. Now that's an interesting thing. When we connect with other believers and we understand the principles of God's love working in and through us, um, our love is evident. And it's not evident in language as much as it's evident in what we do. Love is almost always a verb, and we must keep that in heart. It's not just a matter of saying, I love them, they're my Christian brother in the Lord. But what are you doing? And what are you willing to do for them? And that's really where it comes down and the rubber hits the road, as we say. It comes in our actions, and we need to tell people we love them too. That's not wrong, but we need to really display that love. And apparently these Colossians loved each other and were supporting each other because of the Holy Spirit's common bond in their lives. Well, we'll pick up there in verse 9 in our next session.